and welcome back to another episode of the On the Sideline podcast of Jackson and Kyle. I am Jackson, and I'm joined here, as always, by the man who has just so happened to be watching a lot of uh, Drake May highlights all of a sudden. Kyle, Kyle, how's it going? Uh, doing good. Um, I've been watching Drake May highlights for a bit now, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as it comes closer and closer to the time, it feels like it might be the one. Yeah, might be might be happening, Kyle. Well, just a week ago, we were talking. I was like, ah, it's probably not going to happen. It, you know, I was looking at some mock drafts. It feels like it's almost a hot take to say Drake May is going number two at this point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, is Washington trying to like run a ringer on people? Although I don't really know their incentive to like lie. Um, yeah, what is what is that but, accomplishing? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not like you're tricking Chicago into taking Jaden Daniels, right? So I I don't know. It's all interesting. So. um I'm excited for it. Um, You know, if it ends up being Drake May, I'm going to be thrilled. I'll talk myself into Jaden Daniels anyway. So let's just do it. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, it's, it's possible as well. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, just thinking, uh, I wonder if, is there potentially some sort of, uh, Hey, Pete, the Patriots like, Hey, I hear Drake May might fall to three Vikings. uh, Maybe it could happen. Maybe. I mean, we'll have to see. I don't know. There's still a lot at play, right? Yeah, uh, definitely a lot that could happen. Lots going to happen in today's podcast, Kyle. We have our division uh, position group rankings uh, for defense now, which I think it should be an interesting show. I'll say this: there are some hot takes in this one. This, if you're if you've been complaining about uh, last week was all you know picking a lot of consensus stuff, I, I've got some hot takes here, right? and I think in general this feels like a very wide open defensive board. There, there's a couple that feel like most people. Uh, you know, have a certain player, certain areas, but I think you could make an argument for number one at any of these positions. Uh, you could argue, you know, different players could be number one. I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certainly some hot takes here. Um, I just don't think it's a very strong defensive draft. I think corner's pretty good, and I think there's a couple pretty good defensive tackles, and there's a couple edge guys I like, but you know. There's a reason that I think a lot of defensive prospects aren't being talked about at the top of the draft. I don't think it's that strong at the top. Yeah, and even some of the people that are getting talked about at the top, I'm not sure if they'll go. But I got to be honest, I do think there are some really good uh, good players. So do you yeah. want to start off with defensive line? Yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, well, let's start off with defensive line. So, again, we do things a little bit differently. I'm not do- separating edge rushers and defensive tackles. I'm going to do uh, all defensive linemen together. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just get into the list. Starting off with number 10, again, it almost feels like number 10 uh, spot on my boards tends to be, like, the most unique prospect, more so than, like, the, the you know, uh, best or anything like that. It just seems to be kind of how it ends up working. Tamandre Sweat does make my top 10 list. He is here at number 10. There are some concerns I have with uh, Sweat. For one thing, he was kind of a one-year wonder uh, as kind of, you know, not not the oldest prospect in the world, but at 22. So there is some concern there. Um, I, I Listen, so if you don't know anything about uh, Tavondre Sweat, he's 6'4", 365 pounds. Okay, that's kind of the main thing you have to know about him and could move very well uh, for that size. It definitely is one of those for that size kind of guys, right? You have to uh, add on that qualifier. Um, I I put in my notes, he looks like Andy Reid in the punt, pass, and kick competition. He's just like that much bigger than everyone else around him uh, and can move. I just, I think you have some concerns. I feel like a lot of times the day three guy who's huge and a big run stuffer stuffer doesn't always hit at the next level. And the fact that it's kind of a one-year wonder. And apparently uh, his like selling point was, oh, hey guys, I I was immature when I was younger, but don't worry, I'm past that. Then he got a DUI, like, uh, you know, after he told all the teams that. So that doesn't help things. It's for uh, weed, not for alcohol, but still a, you know, a, a concern there. So, yeah, makes yeah. my list, but at, at number 10. Ironically, I have him at number 10, too. Oh, there you <laughs> go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, interesting is the right way to put it. I don't, like, I wouldn't be shocked if this guy's not playing football in a few years, to be honest. But I also mm-hmm. wouldn't be shocked if he's a monster, right? Like, yeah, it, it's one of, it, it's, it's a stereotype. It's cliche almost. You can't teach size, but uh, mm-hmm. you can't teach that size, right? And it's just, it's different. Um, I don't know how much it's going to hold up at the NFL level. I mean, I think we we saw the, you know, he's not Jordan Davis as a prospect, but like we saw the Jordan Davis of it all where, you know, his his conditioning is very much still brought into question. 
And I think it's mm-hmm. going to be even more so with Sweat. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But, you know, there is a uniqueness to his game that you just can't really get anywhere else. Yeah. And that's why, well, I wouldn't, I would have hated it as like a first round or even like, a, you know, I don't think he's a top 50 pick for me. I think kind of when you get past the top 50 and you're looking at like who can kind of just be a player who can contribute, uh, I do think it's something where like, well, yeah, there is a very possible, very big possibility he could contribute as like a, I just, Again, he played like 500 snaps a, a year in college, and like he was like jogging half of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's exactly like that. So it's uh, it's a it's a he's an interesting player for sure. And I, uh, I, uh, I just yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely the wild card pick of the draft. But I definitely think I could talk myself into it as a second day pick or something like that. Like you said, day three potentially too. Yeah. Well, let's move on to. Might be a hot take here. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many. I don't think he's someone many people are talking about as like a first rounder, but I have seen some mock drafts have him as kind of the end of the first round. I'm a little lower than that. Uh, Darius Robinson uh, out of Missouri, someone who is, I think part of the question mark is what position is he? So he's kind of like edge and defensive tackle. I have some concerns about that of like, the you know I, i'm always just i feel like again it's one of those things where the guy who you're like oh well i'm not sure if he's defensive tackle or edge but he works you know well enough uh, at both in college sometimes you end up being a kind of a jack of all trades master of none at the nfl level do like his power he also doesn't have great analytics which is something that very that much value for defensive linemen um i, I also said I don't, I don't know if i love his his speed uh when it comes to the nfl level so i just don't know what his ceiling is so still makes my list again I, I believe I did have him as a top 50 prospect, but he's still on the low end of my top 50. Um, yeah, this is getting weird because I have him at number nine, too. Um, okay. we, can't, we can't stop agreeing, Kyle. What's going on? It's going to break up here. I, I have a feeling okay. it's going to break up here. So, um, But I have some of the similar concerns. I don't love defensive ends who win one way. You know? Mm-hmm. I think like the Dwight Freenies are very rare breeds, and Dwight Freeney was also really really a hall of famer so yeah. you know mm-hmm. those guys who can win a very particular in a very particular style i think you need some diversity to your defensive line attacking palette and yeah i just don't think he's going to be able to go in and bully guys at the defensive line on the offensive line in the nfl every play so those are definitely my concerns that being said he is big he is strong he is pretty powerful so I think there is something there. I think he could at least be a pretty good rotational, if not a good run stopping defensive end. But I do think there are some genuine concerns with the, the ability to win consistently in the pass rush. Yeah. Uh, yeah. An interesting player though. Too. And again, he's one of those guys too, where you almost wonder, does he build, does he just add 10, 15 pounds and play defensive tack? Like, or does he try to lose 10, 50? Like, the, is it maybe you try to get him to be a different weight? Uh, maybe, but, and there's enough, there is enough entry there. I'm still going to spend a day two pick on him, but that's just kind of how I, I feel like he's someone you almost have to talk yourself into. I definitely think so. But I also think if you have a pretty good defensive line room, he could be an interesting project to take on because he does have talent. He does have some, you know, a, a nice athletic profile to look at. Like you said, he's not the fastest guy, but he is strong and he is quite athletic in that regard. So he is someone you could kind of take on for that in that regard and say like, Hey, let's clean up our run defense a little. He could definitely get some snaps there. Kieran says uh, team Kyle. How are you team Kyle? We're just taught we're we've agreed with everything so far. None, we have no different opinion. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I'm telling it better, I guess. I, I suppose so. Well, let's move on. I'll see if the, the uh, same uh, draft board continues. I have uh, Braden Fisk, the uh, Florida defensive tackle here, who's, again, uh, I'm going to stop saying interesting because I feel like we say interesting at least a million times every podcast. Uh, a fascinating prospect here, a unique one, as his thing is kind of last year wasn't great. The tape wasn't great last year. The uh, analytics weren't great last year. There were still some highlights for sure. And like, quite frankly, his highlights are among the best, I think, out of any of these defensive linemen. His highlights are very fun because he is really quick and that makes it very exciting. Uh, The thing is, I I do wonder if, so I wonder if he was hurt last year. He has injury history and maybe that's a way to excuse that. To me, that's, I'm willing to kind of uh, draft him in round two because I am willing to say maybe there's, you know, 
potential that it was an injury thing. And I think he was so good in 2022 that that's where I'm optimistic about it. Uh, also very old, I mean, 24 years old. So definitely yeah. not going to be for everybody. But if you're a team that's kind of in a full rebuild, let's take some big swings. He could be a big swing to take. Certainly a big swing. Um, I agree with you. He has the athletic profile to be a um, a player worth taking. Uh, he is off my board. Uh, I didn't even list him on my honorable mention. Um, I only had a couple for this one. because. Uh, but anyway, um, I didn't list him on my honorable mentions just because of the risk he listed. Um, he's old. He's been hurt. And he kind of sucked last year. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> those big, three big things, red flags there. Yeah. Those three things are, are, are quite big red flags for me. So I had those mm-hmm. off, but I understand the athletic palette and, uh, you know, what he can do there. Yeah. It's just, it's, this is a whole, a boomer bust pick you know so uh, how do you have uh him over to Vondre sweat someone in the chat asked me well uh i i, I think i kind of mentioned i'm not huge on sweat because i feel like is sweat a move a needle mover you know is he going to be someone who for a football team really changes uh the dynamic of a team fisk if he hits a ceiling could be which is why i have him at eight but again it depends on your situation in which uh if, if for one team i would defend drafting fisk over sweat for another team i wouldn't uh, yeah, I think they both carry risk. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I even beyond the off-field stuff with Sweat, like I think there's on-field stuff I'm worried about too. Like, yeah. I'm worried about a 370-pound football player. Yeah, um, right. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I'm, I have concerns with both of them. Um, I would lean Sweat. Um, I, I agree with uh, Tariq on this one. But I, yeah, I think that they both carry some risk, even with just, you know, disregarding the off-field stuff. And then there's off-the-field risk with Sweat too. Yeah. All right. Well, we finally got some disagreements. That's what we're here for. Um, next up on my list, the player who I'll be honest, I thought people were going to be higher on. Uh, and, and I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen on a lot of like mock drafts and stuff, but a, a player who I, I like, I don't love. Uh, Chris Braswell makes my list at number seven, uh, Alabama edge rusher, who, uh, again, the pass rushing is great. The pass rushing really good stuff and that's what you're drafting him for he's so explosive and he is a very strong player as well and feels you know you're gonna have to coach him up that's kind of the thing he's a one-year mm-hmm. wonder and he still is not a very polished player um and you know uh he is someone who when he gets kind of behind a tackle he can get pushed out of the way so for someone who's so explosive i just wonder if those are going to work at the nfl level i really do um, I wonder if he has the strength to make it work at the NFL level. He is only 6'3", although 255, so has weight on him. Uh, th- those are just my concerns. Just feels like a very raw player. But the, I, I, to me, I see him as kind of a, a pass rush specialist, perhaps, who can maybe come in on third downs and really succeed. Yeah, uh, he has all the physical traits. He has some of the, he has, like you said, he has the one year of kind of pedigree and uh, production which is something you look for in an edge rusher too. You know, you want a guy who produces. Um, I think we'll talk about another guy at the end who's being talked about a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, he has he has some of the production, uh, even if it's just one year. He has some of the physical traits. Um, but yeah, I think he I think he needs to be fine tuned a little bit, right? There's not so much the um, the technical aspect of his game that I think I worry about a little bit, and that's why I had him on my honorable mention. But yeah, there's a oh, lot wow. to really like about him. Okay, so you have a couple of honorable mentions, uh, guys who aren't on your list that I have uh, on mine. I'm, I'm interested in that. But, you know, we could spend a, li- a while on Bradswell, but I kind of figure let's go to his teammate, which I think has a little bit more of a discussion here. Dallas Turner makes my list oh boy. here at number <laughs> six. Yeah, so this is probably my maybe my hottest take on this list. Dallas Turner is someone who is uh, number eight on the consensus big board. Every mock draft I've seen has him going eight to the Falcons. Every single one. Like it's, it's cons- without fail. There's more mock drafts. I, I feel like Caleb Williams one and Dallas Turner eight are like the two things you see. Listen, uh, there's a lot to like about Dallas Turner. There is. I have a first round grade on him. I think he should be around uh, pick 2021. 20, That's where it happens. So I'm higher on this defensive line class than other people are. That's a part of the part of part of it. Um, he was a bit of a one-year wonder. There, he was not someone. He does not someone who has a ton of history of six, uh, you know, success in terms of advanced stats at Alabama. Um, he also has very poor run defense analytics. Very good pass rush analytics. Very similar to Braswell. Now, um, I, I think to me when I saw his when I watched his film, I saw a guy who very much would overcommit 
uh, a lot of times. He is, again, so explosive. He does have the quick hands and feet, and he does it works in the pass rush. I just feel like he's going to have to become more of a complete defensive lineman and kind of get the run defense down, I, or he's going to be stuck just on third downs. I think he'll be a good player no matter what. I think he'll end up being a good, you know, but I just want him, I, if I'm drafting someone high in the first round, I want someone who is going to be more than just a third down specialist. I get your concerns. I hear you. Um, I had him number two, and I felt like wow. that was a hot take. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. There is one guy I think would get drafted lower because of positional value, but I just like more as a prospect that I have number one. Um, but I do like Turner's game still. I I get some of the concerns. I think the thing is, is so you said you're higher on this, this, this defensive line class. I think it's a particularly weak edge rusher class at the top. I think there's I think there's two guys I like and Turner's mm-hmm. one of them. And I think one of the things I like about Turner compared to the class is that there's just not a lot of guys with that kind of who have a the production and b that kind of like special level twitch. And I think he has that like special level twitch that's like high level. Um and I'm willing to take a risk on that, right? Like I'm willing to take a risk on that cuz he also produces at least in pass rush. Like you said, the run defense has to get better and I think he was incredibly sloppy at that last season. And you could look at some like the Texas game in particular, like the way they ran on them and stuff. I think a lot of that had to do with some of the mistakes he made. Um I think some of that can get better and I just think that he's a good pass rusher and I just don't think there's a ton of great pass rushers in this class and that's why I'm taking a uh taking a risk. Yeah, and and that's also part of why I think uh, Atlanta might take him at number eight. It's just because like maybe they don't feel he's worth number eight, but because he's the you know they feel he's the best pass rusher, they want a pass rusher. Uh, Part of me is worried a little bit too of like I don't think it's quite the same as like okay his if his pass rush is a nine out of ten and his run defense is a six out of ten. I think to to get some of the run defense to be like a seven or eight out of 10, his pass rush might have to drop to like an eight out of 10 because he Mm -hmm. might have to not overcommit. And that's, that's part of my concern. Again, I have him at 22 on my overall big board. I like Dallas Turner. I think he's going to hit in the NFL. I do. I just, I'm, I don't see a superstar edge rusher prospect. I see a a solid edge rusher prospect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can completely understand that. So I, I think, how do I phrase this? I'm trying to think. Um, but I just I just think overall that he has a special talent that a lot of guys in this draft class don't have to me. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm just going to bet on. Um, I think, like, I, I don't view this as, like, a Tyree Wilson situation, right? Like, I'm not yeah, drafting a guy who's, like, kind of just that, that physical talent that doesn't really know how to play football sort mm-hmm. of situation. I think he's going to be, at minimum, a good pass rusher. And if the other things don't get better... Well, I at least have like a third down specialist, which guess what? It's not worth the eighth pick of the draft if he does go to Atlanta or something like that. But it is a worth, you know, it's it's a decent player. It's a decent, valuable commodity to have that extra pass rusher in your rotation. Um, it's not like a complete bust. But yeah, I did. And there there is a scenario where he doesn't live up to this pick if he doesn't get better at some of the, his uh, some of his negative qualities so far. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you. And my next player on the list, I feel kind of similar about. I actually have him just one spot ahead on my big board. So kind of interchangeable. You could flip these two around if you wanted to. One of Jared Verse uh, out of Florida. Is Verse or Verse? Verse, eh? Verse? Verse. Yeah. Which is first. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, I feel kind of similar. Uh, it's another guy who really good pass rush uh, numbers, really bad run defense numbers. Uh, he, he's had a longer history of success, though, which is kind of what, uh, gave me the edge. Now he is older as well, so he's a couple years older. But you know, it's kind of been consistently good for the past three years. So, uh, and is someone who will he'll overcommit as well. So he has that yeah. it's kind of same issue. But I think that his aggressiveness translates to the NFL level a little better, in my opinion. Um, and I don't think he has a he has no weakness in the uh, pass rush game. I I think his pass rush stuff will work. I don't think he needs to rely. He doesn't rely on the overcommitment there as much as I see Turner uh, sometimes relying on it. Uh, so I, I, I feel he's a bit more polished, uh, is a little bit bigger as well. Uh, so someone who I decided to give a slight edge to as my number five defensive lineman. Yeah. I have a number three. Uh, yeah. I, okay. um, yeah. I, I like him a lot. I'm just a big fan of his. He, he is a fun defensive lineman to watch play. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I could be skewing it because of that, but I'm okay with that. 
I enjoy watching him play. I do agree he is a very talented pass rusher. He's very diverse in the ways he can get to the quarterback. He's strong. He's quick. He has a lot of moves. I think a lot of that goes for him. Not the longest arms, but he does seem to do well in getting separation still. Um, so I think those are things to like. Uh, I, I'm willing to give him a chance. Like you mentioned, the overaggressiveness sometimes. I, I think I'm willing to ignore some of it because I think he was their only pass rusher at times. Um, mm-hmm. And I think yeah, he sure. had to make some plays. Um, and those are things that I'm willing to forgive and see if he can adjust at the NFL level because I just don't think that they had a lot of, you know, they didn't have a lot of top end edge rushers next to him. And I think that had to, he had to take chances on his own. It's a, a total, a great, great, great point. Uh, the, absolutely. That's it's good to see. That, uh, there's a little things you can sometimes miss out on not being a big college football fan, just watching the pure film of like, yeah, stuff like that of like, you know, I think we sometimes forget that the players who are playing aren't trying to just get drafted into the NFL. They're playing to try and win a football game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, they're, they're being asked to do things that probably they shouldn't do, but they have mm-hmm. to do it because they're playing with guys who are going to be like car salesmen. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh it's, it's maybe not a fair state, but you know, still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's fair very true. Um and no no disrespect to any car salesman, car salesman out there. Yeah, I mean, it's a respectable job. You make a good income, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, we just want know. to make sure that if any car salesman's listening to this like wait, does Kyle hate me? Uh maybe not. No, I have respect for you. Don't worry. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, very good. Number four on my list. I think this will be another hot take. Someone I kind of fell in love with uh, here uh, where we're in the kind of pure pass rushers. Although this guy has a little bit better run defense analytics uh, than the other guys, despite uh, not being the biggest. Give me Chop Robinson at number four, Kyle. Uh, I like Chop Rob. His, again, uh, the, the PFF grade, the pass rush win rate, all of those things I like to look at. Incredible. Uh, the, you know, uh, this is a, a great pass rusher now. I think you have to wonder how much of his speed rushes will work at the NFL level. I think most of them, I, I think he'll be good. Uh, he is kind of a shorter player, but he's still two fifth listed at two fifty. I think that, you know, he also falls down a lot, which is the weird thing I noticed, but he's so explosive. His hands are so quick. He knows how to use his hands so well. Uh, also doesn't have the biggest snap count in the world, but does have multiple years of really good production. So yeah. Uh, I, and he's only 21. So I'm all aboard the chop Robinson train. All right. Um, I mean, I do have him six. I do like some of his, I like some of his tape. Um, I have some of the concerns that you kind of listed out there. I mean, he is very athletic (laughs) and he Mm -hmm. is very quick off the line of scrimmage. Um, but like you said, is, is he just going to go off tackle every play and try and win going around the guy? I think those are some of the concerns I have. Um, and is that a consistent pass rush win approach? Um, I think that's just my biggest concern, and that's why I have him below some of the other guys. I think the other, I think my top three defensive ends have a little more diversity to the ways they can get to the quarterback, and then I have two defensive tackles in front of them. So, um, I that those are my concerns with Chop Robinson. Yeah, uh, Tariq says so. You put him at number four because his name is Chop LMAO. No, that's not. I did not put him at number four. Uh, Tariq is not a fan of me so far today, Kyle. Yeah, he is uh, ripping you to shreds. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm giving my opinions. You're gonna have this. That's you know, it's part of the part of the part of the thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the thing where it's like, is he Hassan Reddick or is he, uh, you know, one of these? Uh, every year there is a great pass rush. Is he Nolan Smith? Right? Like, like those yeah. are kind of the two uh, guys you could look at. I don't know, but again. For me, I want part of it is I do value run defense more than other people. I think his run defense is better than those other guys I just mentioned. I, I do, um, and <laughs> he, you know the analytics back that up. Uh, I I also I, I think that I want a needle mover. I want a guy who's not just going to come in and be an okay pass rusher. I want a guy who can take over games or take over series. Is to me, if he hits his potential, he can do that. He could definitely do that if he hits his potential. Like I said, I just I, I have a little bit of concern about if he can hit that potential. But like you mm-hmm. said, there's just too much to like, and he definitely jumps off the tape with that athleticism for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to my number one edge rusher. Uh, is that number three? So I have uh, two defensive tackles in my top two. Number one pass rusher, Leu Latu, does make my list. Now, a bit of an older prospect. Uh, he has the uh, you know. Well, he was medically retired for a year due to yeah. the neck injury thing, which is concerning. But to me, there's no question his tape 
was better than anyone else's tape at the pass rush position. Like no question. I think he was, he's someone who can, was a monster, not just in pass rush, but also in run defense. Uh, you know, he has the size. He, he checks every box other than that. Like the, you know, the injury question mark, uh, and you know, isn't a bit of an older prospect, but, uh, you know, uh, I, to me, I think that he's, I'm willing to, again, there is a risk factor with him as there is with, in my opinion, all of these edge rushers, I'm willing to ignore, uh, or at least hope those risks do not come into play here. I'm willing to bet on potential here. Uh, I, I agree with what you say here. I do have him for, I did knock him for the age. I did knock him for the injury risk, which I do think is justifiable, but there are two sides mm-hmm. to this, right? Like it worked out for Jalen Phillips. I mean, so far, <laughs> you yeah. know, he did get hurt. So I don't know, but I mean, he, but a different, uh, a different injury, you know, unrelated. right. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I do have him for, because I am concerned about those things, but I also understand that he is good. <laughs> he is good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't get too mad about it. Um, a lot to like about him. I think he might be the most like skilled edge rusher. I think he'd, I'd put him reverse, like just in, ways that they can beat offensive linemen i think those are probably the two most skilled the one thing about him is i just don't think he's athletic i don't think he's as athletic as turner and verse and while i think he's a little more polished than those two i don't like i feel like those guys could catch up and pass him if they reach their potential um and reach their ceiling yeah, well hutchinson wasn't as athletic as Kayvon thibodeau or uh, trayvon walker either kyle that is true Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Hutchinson's more athletic than lots. He, he is. So Hutchinson, yeah. Hutchinson was like like a, like a top like seven most a- best athlete at the edge rush position, but just because he's a white he guy. He was in Thibodeau, was, right? And yeah, was going up against Thibodeau and Walker. That that was the issue. Uh, no, uh, it it's fair. I have him at number ten on my overall big board, though. I, I again, I, mm-hmm. I get the concern. I just think he's uh, you know, I, so is he's your number uh, three edge rusher. He's my number four defensive lineman. I didn't separate it. He would be my number three edge rusher. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so, yeah, number three edge rusher, number four defensive lineman. And I have seven first-round grades. How many guys do you have uh, first-round grades on the defensive line? Um, let, I can double-check real quick. I'm trying to uh, – rem- I, I believe I had – so Dallas Turner, I believe, was my last – my first uh, guy with first-round grades. So I believe I, I have six. I do not have Braswell as a first-rounder. Okay. Yeah, so I, it looks like one of my top, one of my seven first rounders did not make your top ten. So we'll talk about that at the end. Okay, yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that. But first, let's go to so there's two defensive tackles, and I think you could argue either one. I really, yeah. I really do. I think that they're they're both very yeah. good. I had them both as top ten prospects on my big board. I'm a huge fan of both of these guys. Um, number two. Uh, so all of a sudden you can call him Johnny Newton. I've been trying to pronounce his yeah. first name every video. I've recorded a bunch of mock drafts and everything, and then to find out on like the last one, someone calls him Johnny Newton. And I guess we can, I could have done that the whole time. Uh, yeah, yeah, he goes by Johnny. So <laughs> okay. uh, big fan of his too. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you go first. Why did Why do you like Johnny Newton? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, what's not to like? Uh, and what's funny is his analytics aren't actually great. Uh, they're good, but like. The the tape is just unbelievable. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I wrote in my notes baffling athleticism. Uh it's just it's it's shocking how well he moves. His hands and his feet are just so good. Uh, and he has a good amount of playing time as well. Over uh six hundred snaps in each of the last three seasons and over seven hundred each of the past two seasons. Uh the only couple like critiques I have and part of why he wasn't able to be number one is uh, I think there are stronger defensive tackles, and he did take a small step back from 2022 to 2023 uh but you know i still think he's uh, i'm banking that upside uh, he, i've seen multiple years of production and he's just 21 uh feels like a very polished and kind of a can't miss guy yeah he he's very talented uh i really like johnny newton uh illinois is one of the few teams i've ever watched at the college football level to design an entire defense around a defensive tackle and it's because this guy's this freaking good Mm-hmm. Um, he, he is really talented. He, I mean, his, uh, some of the best hands, he has a lot of that kind of, uh, DJ reader a little bit to me, as far as like, just a, I'm going to wreck stuff on the defensive line in the middle. So mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of his, um, I did have him number five. I, I just think that he's positional value knocks him a little bit because he's not as much of a pass rusher, but I do think he has some of that to his game, but I think he's going to be a very good defensive tackle for a long time in the NFL. Yeah, and again, I, I kind of value uh, run defense and pass rush 
the same. So uh, that you know, might just be a what do we value thing more so than evaluation of the players themselves. Yeah, uh, the DJ Reader is a good a good comparison. Just in general, it just it feels like it, it it's hard to imagine him missing. Yeah, I mean, at the very bare minimum, like I think he's gonna like start for ten years, right? And at least yeah. be a two down defensive tackle. Um, I I don't know if he like. I feel like that's not at a minimum. Like maybe not start ten years, but I think he's going to be a two down defensive tackle for a long time. Yeah, uh, seems like he'll be very good, but was not number one on my list. Yeah. I went I went Byron Murphy the second uh, here out of Texas, number one uh, defensive lineman as he is someone who you know uh, his hands are also incredible. Uh, he's someone who is definitely sh- is uh, I think stronger than Newton. He can you know really throw guys around. He basically check checks every box. Like the only negative I have is a, a couple times he can be too timid, but it's not a massive deal. Uh, you know has good size, great analytics, great tape, checks every box. Uh, you're hard hard pressed to find a negative for Murphy. I have him as my favorite defensive lineman in this class. Yeah, he's the guy. He's the defensive lineman in this draft to me that has like realistic superstar level potential mm-hmm. to me and that's why he's number one for me too i think he could be a stud i think he could be a pro bowler i think he could be an all pro at the defensive tackle position um i have him over johnny newton because i think you know i think he's a very good run stopper stopper but i think he's you know even more gifted in pass rushing at the defensive tackle spot which as we've seen time and time again with the chris joneses with the aaron donalds i think that's something that's a valuable commodity in modern nfl being able to rush the interior and collapse that pocket. I think he has that sort of ability to do that sort of thing, win on the inside. I think that's a special talent to have, and I think that's what puts him at number one for me. I think that's something that's not easy to find, and it's very valuable. Yeah. Uh, it really it kind of it feels very like, uh, you know, like Jalen Carter, but without the off-the-field stuff. Yeah. I mean, he, it does uh, – I don't know. I think Carter's a better prospect, but You're I think it's right. close. I think uh-huh. it's close. Like I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that hard against Murphy because I'm such a big fan. Uh, wh- well, why is why are we kind of uh, what what are we missing? I guess because it feels like other people don't view him that way. Like, people he's usually considered like maybe like the 15th best prospect in, in the, you know kind of going the middle of for the these uh, mock drafts. Why? I. <sighs> I still think the defensive tackle position is undervalued in the NFL and especially mm-hmm. positional value when it comes to the draft. I think people over overthink this and just say edge, edge, edge. We're drafting edge, edge rusher before defensive tackle nine times out of 10. And you know what? When I think an edge rusher is an elite pass rusher compared to a run stopping defensive tackle, I agree. I agree with that 100%. But I, I personally would take a, pass i would take an interior pass rusher over an uh edge pass rusher i think it's a more valuable position and i think it's harder to find and i think that position is just so underlooked at this time yeah uh well we'll see what happens so uh let, let's finish the defensive line and you said you had someone for first round grade i did not mention who was that um i love marshawn Neeland. <laughs> okay uh western michigan i i think this guy is just I mean, he played at a smaller school, so I think you could bring into co- consideration the level of talent he went against. That's completely fair, but I just think he's a monster. He bullied guys. I mean, I think that you know, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not going like full on like Khalil Mack against like the Mack level play teams, but this guy, this guy bullied guys in that, in that at that level of competition. He's bigger, faster, stronger than everybody else. I think he has that level. I think he play at the NFL level too. I'm a big Marshawn Nealon fan, and I would take him end of the first round. Interesting. Yeah, I, I was not as uh, crazy about him. Now, I didn't do a full, you know, there's some guys that I kind of like will do uh, some evaluation on. And if I don't think they're going to make my list, I kind of I'll, I'll uh, pull the plug because you only have so much time. Uh, he was one of those guys. Uh, I, I thought that, you know, kind of has a weird body type, right? Kind of that, that tweener uh, kind of brought that up uh, earlier of like, you know, can it, can it work at the NFL level? Are you great at one thing? And I also didn't love, it didn't feel very polished for me. It does have great, good analytics, not amazing, but good analytics. But again, I would hope so if you're playing at West, Western Michigan. Right. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting if his, if his speed is able to translate to the next level, I do think he could just be a really good edge rusher. Who's big, but that's probably the biggest concern. And I'm just willing to take the chance on it. I think he has that. Uh, I think, I think he has that twitch to him. 
Yeah, interesting. Well, uh, you know, uh, someone says, uh, great take, Kyle. So, again, Kyle is, uh, you know, the chat is, as always, big fan of Kyle. You know, I have to put my list on it. So, I think that you, if you have a, a hot take, it kind of goes by quickly. Uh, for the chatters, uh, it's yeah. on the screen. I think makes my takes, they notice my bad takes more. That is very true. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, uh, yeah. Who else do you have on your that. list? Um. Little lower on my list, I had him number eight, uh, Chris Jenkins out of Michigan. I would have him second round. Just another one of those guys. I think he's a good defensive tackle. He is strong. That guy might be the strongest player in this draft class. Um, so, yeah, I think he's another guy you could plug and play and probably a defensive tackle. So I, I like uh, I like that uh, I like that pick. Okay. Yeah. I, I, uh, I could do more film evaluation on him. I didn't do uh, maybe as much as I should have. Uh, anyone else make your list that I didn't mention? No, that was all on my list. Um, okay. Yeah, and then you you hit on my honorable mentions. Um, so, yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Well, let's move on then. Do you want to go linebacker or d defensive back next? Um, let's just jump. Let's power through the linebackers. I don't have a lot of strong opinion on these guys. I think there's one guy I like, and then, I don't know. It does not, this class does not excite me, so we can power through. I actually weirdly have a bunch of hot takes here, so I don't know what happened to me here, but uh, I'm very di different than uh, everyone else. I agree that there's it's it's hard to come up with five guys. It is uh, that yeah. that was not easy. Um, number five, I went with Maurice uh, Luafu out of Notre Dame, uh, mm -hmm. who you know um, is is a small player, but he does play very physical at six two to uh, thirty nine. Definitely that you know uh, has really good power, has really good strength, uh, and he's great coming downhill. Uh, I have my notes. It's as raw as it gets. Uh, he's as raw as it gets. I also wrote, he, he's one of, he needs like one of those radars that you have in video games where you can see where the ball is. If he had that, he'd be great. He just, he's, it takes him a long time to figure out where the ball is and all that stuff. So that's kind of why I'm not fully banking on him. And again, a guy who's 240 pounds who relies on power is also a little concerning, but uh, you know, there's enough there that I think, you know, I don't know if it's round four. Sure. Yeah. I have him five too. Um, I think there are interesting qualities about him. I think he could play a specific role in a defense. Um, like you said, he is very physical. I think he could blow up some line of scrimmages. Um, but I also think like Devin Light might think he's bad in pass coverage. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think he. Uh, I think he's got some work there. Yeah, I, I think. So. Uh, did, did he make your list? Yeah, number five as well. Okay, gotcha. Um, number four, I went with uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Out of Clemson, uh, guy, you know, uh, it's it's he's good, good fundamental player. Uh, just doesn't have great athleticism. It isn't a big guy, six feet tall, two thirty. Uh, I just, I, I don't, uh, you know, it, it seems like someone who could be a good coach someday. <laughs> yeah, um, I have number four. I, I basically mm -hmm. had all the same things. Very smart, um, not as athletically gifted. Yeah, uh, there's, you know, I think we don't have to spend forever on him. This is my uh, hot take, I suppose. Uh, Peyton Wilson makes my list at, at number three. Uh, I'm, you know, some people have him as a fringe first rounder or like a high second rounder. Uh, I feel like he's like a linebacker version of Kenny Pickett of like he kind of finally, you know, he's a one year wonder at age 23 and he has injury history. He isn't a fantastic athlete. He has the size. And, you know, he made some consistent good reads. He understood the defense, kind of mastered the defense at North Carolina State. Um, and there's there's value to that. There's a value to a guy who knows where he needs to be. To me, I think that's kind of where his value runs out. Well, he was good last year. I just don't really see that translating to the NFL level. But maybe I think it could be a, a solid depth piece. But I think that's what he is. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. I think those are some really good points. I, you know, didn't really take as much of it into consideration. I do have the injury risk, and um, I do have the injury risk in the age at at play. Um, but I also think he might just be a good football player too. So I have him number two. I have him second round. I don't have any linebackers in the first round personally. Um, but yeah, I, I think that there are. I think there are some interesting qualities about him, and I think he could just be good and smart. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are, there are risks there with the age and the injury. And like you said, he could have just mastered the college game. Yeah. Uh, number two, I'm going with junior Colson out of Michigan, who I actually kind of like, uh, mm -hmm. I feel like he's kind of similar to Peyton Wilson in a lot of ways, but two years younger, which matters a lot at the college level. So to be kind of a smart player, not the best athlete, but he's okay. I think he can work. I think the question too was like, what is his ceiling? But if you're a linebacker needy team, you're like, hey, we just need someone who can come through and work now. I, I'd even be willing to spend a, a high second round pick on him. 
Yeah, he's my number one linebacker. I would okay, draft him in the second round. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I think it. There's a lot of um. What the heck? I just had his name in my head. T.J. Edwards. He, there's a lot of T.J. Edwards. I feel like in his game, like Edwards. I think also similarly dropped because he wasn't an amazing athlete. But it's uh, it's a guy who I think kind of just knows the game, kind of knows the mm-hmm. situations. He gets in the right spots. He makes the right reads and he makes the right play. And I think those are all good qualities. So yeah, I have him as number one. And I, I he's another guy where he's not the flashiest pick. I don't think a lot of teams would be hooping and hollering if they drafted him. But I think he could be a starting linebacker for ten years. Yeah, it's interesting you brought up Edwards too, because I'm like, like Philadelphia would just be the perfect fit for him, right? Like, don't make him blitz, let him let him sit back there, play coverage, and stop the run. He should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, I think he has those qualities. Kyle, I do have an, a linebacker with a first round grade, uh, believe it or not. Uh, Edgerin Cooper uh, mm-hmm. is my uh, favorite linebacker in this draft class. I really liked him. I, I thought he's a great athlete. And he wouldn't play coverage a lot. You know, I wrote like, you know, the occasional time you would see him play coverage, he would be good at it. Cause like that, that was definitely something that would happen. Um, a huge one year wonder uh, at 22. So again, you know, uh, not quite the same as if he was 20 and was a one year wonder, but not like one of these 24 year olds either. Um, it has very much will be over aggressive and that'll get him in trouble. And you're basically gonna have to teach him how to play linebacker. That's the thing. But <laughs> You know, I think in one of my mock drafts, I had him going to the Ravens at, with pick 30. Like, to me, that feels right. I, he's not going to go that early. He, you know, but maybe like round two, if the Ravens want to make him a Patrick Queen replacement, uh, have some rough, you know, play early on. But I think he could, I do think he could get the hang of it. And I do think that he is someone who could, uh, you know, but he does well. He does so well that I'm interested enough to spend a late first round pick on him if the situation was right. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, I do have number three. Um, my my short little synopsis here is pros, probably the best athlete of the top linebackers, but I do have cons might be bad. Um, so I, there, there are just times I think he gets beat. And honestly, I think Patrick Queen's a fantastic example because that's who I have basically listed as my comparison. Mm-hmm. I, I could see it taking a few years for him to kind of get his groove. Um, yeah. And I think it could be a slow burn because I think he makes a lot of, uh, I do think he makes a lot of mistakes. And I I do think he's a bit of a mess in coverage at times, but you could bet on the athleticism and coach him up in that regard and just say, be athletic for a couple of years. And once you figure it out, you'll figure it out and be really good. We have a chatter saying, haven't watched linebackers yet. So I would just agree with everything you guys said. Yeah. I just realized that we're, um, you know, my scorching hot linebacker takes no one disagreeing with because no one has watched linebackers. So I can say whatever here. This is good. Yeah, that's what – edge rushers, you got to keep a chalk, and then, you know, yeah. linebackers and safeties, you can get bold. I, I think so. Let's get into – unless you, did you have any other linebackers you wanted to mention? Uh, no. No, I, yeah. I, I don't love this class. No, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even have five, really, I wanted to mention. Yeah, that's fair. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's move on to defensive backs. This is a great defensive back class. This is yes. – uh, there is a lot of – uh, good players. I believe I have, uh, I think I have, uh, I have six guys with first round grades and one was just barely outside of my top 32. So a uh, big fan of this draft class. Um, let's just get into it. Why don't we starting mm-hmm. off with number 10, I went with TJ Tampa who, uh, you know, as someone who's from the Tampa area, I like his name, but there's things to like about TJ Tampa. He is someone who, you know, uh, is six two, but can you know like a good footwork for his size for sure? Has really good ball skills. Um, isn't as physical as you'd think, given the six two uh, nature of his you know height. That's a weird way to say that, given the fact that he's six two. Uh, I'm I'm you know I'm wondering if he's just a slot guy, which isn't a bad thing. That's fine, but I do wonder about that. Uh, you know, his pro day forty time was a four five two, uh, and usually those things are you know half uh, to a full you know point slow. So uh, I care a lot about speed when it comes to corners. I I think that, you know, I don't, I don't know what his ceiling is, but for a day two pick, sure. Uh, Yeah, I have him number nine and I have a lot of the similar uh, concerns. Like, yeah, I think, I think he's talented. I think he knows the game well, but yeah, he's slow. And um, you know, you, you were pretty early on this. I feel like a lot of people have kind of felt the same way now. But uh, I do think speed is really important at the cornerback position, and I just don't think he has it. Um, but mm-hmm. that being said, it's not something that's like you can't overcome it. Um, it's just harder, and especially as you go against top-level receivers. So, yeah, I have a number nine. I do think he is a good football player. 
Yeah, and to do the kind of the, the speed spiel, uh, for one thing, the reason why I believe it is because I did a kind of a you know a study on forty time and how that relates to speed and everything. And guys who run faster forties, uh, you know, it, it's a great indicator of future success. Like speed really does matter. But essentially, it just gives you more margin for error. Like if you're TJ Tampa and run a four or two, if you get out of position a little, you can come back and still make a play. Uh, if you're TJ Tampa and you're you run a a four or five. If you're out of position a little, you're screwed. Yeah. No, I, I agree with it all 100 I mean, it makes sense just logically, so yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Right. It's, it's always nice when one of my hot takes also makes sense logically. They don't all do that. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so sometimes it doesn't even make sense factually, but, uh, you know, you know, I'm doing my best here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he. so yeah, he's number nine for me. I only have two safeties in my top ten. If I were to factor it all out, I did separate it at one point, but if I were to put it all together, I have two safeties. He is my he is my lowest ranked corner in my top ten, which isn't sounds like a dig, but it's not that much of a dig because you're still top ten. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Still still top ten. Uh he I have uh two safeties as well. I believe two safeties as well. Uh this is one of them. Uh Javon Bullard here out of Georgia makes my list at number nine. Um, you know, a uh, good coverage player. Uh, probably just a slot uh, player, I think. You know, slot that slot safety role. Five um, eleven, one ninety five. So he's not a he, not a big guy whatsoever. I do wonder if his frame will work in the NFL. Although he's re- a really good tackler in college, so I, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. It's always that question mark of like it didn't show up on tape, but w- you know there is that question. It doesn't that's not an elite athlete either. Is someone you're hoping can just be like a solid uh, cover slot guy? But again, good enough. I'm willing to spend a, a round two pick on. Uh, yeah, uh, there are things to like about him. I have him on my honorable mentions list. I, I, I just, con- I'm, I am concerned about the size. I do think there are some mm-hmm. things that have some questions about there and, you know, could he be an Antoine Winfield type? He could, but I just don't think he has the same kind of like ball skills and nose to the ball that he does. And mm-hmm. those are things that I worry about because like, I just think that like just Winfield and that kind of player type, like Winfield has like just qualities. He has the nose for the football technique thing that you can't really define. And I think Bullard has some of it, but I don't think it's the same level. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's the kind of thing, right? Where you say, Oh, I don't like this guy. Cause he's uh small. And people, well, what about this player who is small and more? It's like, okay. Well, yeah, but that player like was great at everything else. Again, it's, yeah. it's, you have a much lower margin for error when you're someone like Bullard. Yeah. I, I agree with that. So yeah, I have a, uh, I have him a little lower because of that, but I do like him, and I do think he's worth taking because I do think he is he is pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to number eight, Mike uh, Sainstrill, uh, corner out of Michigan, who uh, is, again, a player like uh, another small guy, uh, 182 pounds, 5'10", so he's very on the small side, although is a corner, so that you can get away with that a little bit more. Uh, you know, really good understanding of zone. Uh, I think he has really good reaction speed as well. Ran a 4.47, so not the quickest guy, though. Doesn't have the best speed, but again, reacts well, has good footwork. Uh, also has some run defense issues, although I don't think it's a complete mess, and a bit of an older prospect at 23. So he makes my list at 8. Yeah, I have him 7. I'm a big fan. Okay. I think he's a fringe first-rounder for me. I, the, the, the thing that's the knock on him is he's very clearly – he is typecasted, right? Like, this guy is going to be a third-down slot corner for basically his career. Mm-hmm. That being said, I think he could be a good, very good slot corner, if not one of the better slot corners in the league. So there is value there, in my opinion, especially as you know the slot corner is becoming more than just like a third down position now at this point. Um, so I do yeah. think he could play it for a long time. Um, but yeah, it's you know if he's playing on the outside of your defense, that's not a good thing. Right. I mean, third down slot corners are playing like playing like 700, 800 snaps now. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, you get a lot of value out of that i have him at 40 on my list so so we're in kind of similar ideas of you know on my big board of like yeah he, he's a kind of a i'm not sure about a first rounder but definitely in the second round would feel good about it uh yeah yeah i, I think that uh like i said it, it uh, the positional the positional value is definitely going to knock him more than anything um and that he can only play one position basically i think there yeah. are some more versatile players at the top of this draft Let's go to a maybe uh, a very versatile player. Tyler Newbin makes my list mm-hmm. at number seven. I have him as a fringe first rounder. He was someone who I gave him like a first round, what's typically a first round grade for me, but that was only worth uh, only the 34th best prospect on the list. So he's right there. Um, again, guy can kind of play any scheme. Uh, it's constantly in position. Um, is, is kind of a one-year wonder. It, not like he only had one good year, but definitely his 
one like NFL year was last year, uh, which is okay. Again, the, it, it, that's that's fine. You just you would rather a guy who's had several good years, but you know it's still good. I did to be honest. Uh, a lot of his highlights were quarterbacks just overthrowing passes right to him. That felt <laughs> like it was like it was a big thing. So uh, again, it's big time quarterback play, baby. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But you know, hey, there is some value to I guess catching the ball to thrown right at you. But it, just in general, he was constantly in position and, and making uh, you know doing a good job, even if you take away some of the maybe luckier plays. Uh. Yeah, I, I, I agree with all that. I have him number six. I have him as a first rounder. I feel pretty good about him. Um like he's my number one safety, and like I only I think the only reason he's number six for me is because I have a lot of really good corners in this draft. <laughs> like yeah, I think I think it's like this is definitely the strongest defensive position in my mind as cornerback. And I think that knocked him a little bit. I think he's versatile, I think he could play free or some strong safety. Like you said, I think he's a good tackler, I think he's pretty good in the deep zone situation. Um so yeah, I think he's really talented and I think he's versatile and I think that's a lot of things that you look for in your modern safety. And uh, yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I, I'm with you. Uh, like I said, I have six first round corners uh, here and I would say my hottest take out of the dra- this draft whole process will be at the cornerback position. It is not here though, although I think this is still a bit of a hot take. Uh, Cooper DeJohn makes my list Uh-oh. at number six. Uh, some people have him as corner one. Uh, you know, uh, I believe the PFF big board has him at number nine on their list, which that seems very high, uh, for him, but yeah, I mean, listen, uh, well, I like him. I think, you know, very good in run defense, uh, has really good, uh, ball skills. I do kind of see him as probably more of like a slot guy. I just have my notes, uh, feels like he would be an all pro in Baltimore and a bum in Washington. Cause you know, he does, he's very quick to bail. He doesn't play a lot of press. Uh, he def- he plays like he's like a guy who runs four seven, which he's not. He ran a four four two on his pro day, but he very much uh, he'll give a lot uh, up, and he can also overcommit. It feels like he has. There's some things he needs to be coached up, in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if he has to be a slot. Uh, that's I could see that. I could see him being an outside corner as well. I just think he needs to be in the right fit to be. He's a very boomer bust player for me. Uh, yeah, I have a number two. Um, okay. I could see the bus potential there. I think he's got the best ball skills in this draft by far. Um, mm-hmm. I think not only is he great with, you know, getting the football, he's taking it to the house too. So mm-hmm. I think he just has a lot of those qualities that are incredibly impressive to watch on tape. Obviously um, I think he can cover really well. I do think he can also like, like you said, I think the interesting thing about him is just how many different positions I could see him being successful in. Uh, Mm -hmm. Like you said, I do think it's going to take the right system and the right defensive coordinator to kind of harness it all. But like, I could see him being an outside corner. I could see him being a slot corner and I could see him being a safety and I could see him being that like nickel safety too. So I do see a lot of positions that I think he could thrive in. He gets to the football. He makes plays when he, when he's at the football. And I just think he's really good in coverage and athletics. So um, I think it's all really impressive. And uh, you know, I think, I think he'd be a worthy selection with the first corner. I have him at number two because I do think one guy's a little bit better and a little more impressive, but I just think those ball skills go a long way and it's going to pop off the tape. Yeah. The ball skills are great. And, and no, no denying that. And like, listen, being good in run defense helps a lot too. Like again, I totally agree. He's a very versatile. He's he may be the most versatile player in this draft class. Uh, it's just the, again, can you, are, I don't know. It, it's, it's similar to my Kyle Hamilton take who I didn't love. And he ended up being awesome of like, okay, you can do a lot of things, but like, what are you going to be great at? Or do you get put in the perfect system where you can kind of like, you know, really just focus on your strengths. Uh, you know, I know he, I just know he's going to get drafted by Baltimore and going to be great. <laughs> that would be, that would be the best possible outcome for him. Uh, that mm-hmm. would be pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, so interested to see what people think about that. I know a lot of people really like uh, the John should be an interesting, you know, it's, it's an interesting prospect, but let's move on. Number five, I have uh, Ennis Rakeshaw Jr. Out of Missouri makes my uh, list. I don't love his speed. He ran a four or five one, uh, which is usually the kind of the cut off is four or five. So like just a little bit below that. Uh, so, uh, but I think he's his own corner. He's another guy who's very scheme dependent. Uh, I think if you're drafting him to be a, uh, a man coverage corner that you're doing it wrong. But I, I think he's really smart. I like, I think it's really good footwork. Uh, you know, he plays physical, isn't great at it, but he will play physical. Uh, I just think he's someone who I, I trust him in zone coverage, get him in the right system. I think he'll succeed. Okay. Um, it's an interesting, he's an interesting player. Like you said, he is very good in zone. Um, I have him as my honorable mention. Uh-huh. Um, 
So I guess here. So like he, the problem I have, so he's typecasted as a pure zone corner, basically, as you were saying, he's pretty mm-hmm. good against the run. Um, and he tries physically, but what's the argument to me for him over DeGene when I think DeGene could play in almost any scheme. And I think Rake Straw would, you know, you mentioned that it's still going to take the right defensive coordinator to harness all of DeGene's skills, mm-hmm. but you know, I still think he has the ability to do different things within the right scheme where Rake Straw is specific team, specific setup and specific downs. Well, for one thing, I think there's more teams that are like we're more of a zone coverage team than there are. We want a, a, a safety who can do 18 different things. I, I think that there's you know not a lot of the you know a lot of not a lot of Baltimore Ravens or Tampa Bay Buccaneers out there that would use someone like uh, the John. So that's one thing. And I I think I think Ray Judge is really good in zone. I, I think he's better at. I think I trust him more in a cover three zone than I do in Cooper DeJohn uh, or DeJean uh, at any other at any one specific thing he's doing. I think that if you tell me. Who can do, if you're telling me, hey, I'm going to have you do 15 different schemes? Who's going to get a better grade uh, on more of them? It's going to be Cooper to John. But if it's, hey, here are three different schemes, uh, and you pick your best ones, I think I would take Rake Shaw Jr. over uh, Cooper to John. Uh, yeah, I think I I get it. And yeah, like you said, there are a lot more, more teams run zone than anything else. Um, so I, I completely understand it. I just I have some questions about, you know, the teams don't run zone every play, and is, is he going to get burned on those plays they don't run zone? I, those are the things I have worries about for him at the next level. It, it's fair, and you could you could talk me you could talk me into I don't don't know if a Bo Nix situation is going to happen, but you could talk me into dropping him down a spot. I, I don't I don't disagree. It is you know very very good points, Kyle. Again, you're good at this. You know you you <laughs> have a lot of good takes. I, I'm Team Kyle as well. I should do it professionally. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think so. Uh, you can find out more of your takes on your own personal YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. One day it'll happen. I hope. Uh, number four. Um, you know, some people have him at at uh, number one on their list. I do not. Uh, I, I like him. Uh, again, these are all first round uh, corners for me. Teron Arnold out of Alabama makes my list at number four. You know, uh, not a great forty time at four. Five, uh, you know, run a four five zero, and I think you can see it on film. And I think he kind of will play off the line, sometimes way off the line, to kind of avoid getting beat deep, which does concern me. Um, I think there are players who maybe have a bit more a uh, mastery of zone the way that uh, Arnold does, but at the same time, you can't teach his traits. And, and like the, it reminds you of Pat Sertan sometimes of like the way he can start and stop and how physical he can play. Uh, there is a real high potential for him. It's just the the lack of speed and kind of what that also means for the rest of his game concerns me enough. I I am going to put him at number four, and I have three guys ahead of him. I get it all. I have him number three just because I think he uh, there there are traits you can't teach, right? And I think that goes a long way. And you know, I just think he's the kind of player I don't want to overthink. I think that he has those traits, and I think he's going to be good. Uh, he's top 20 for me, but I do have it razor thin between him and a couple of the guys right below him because I think there are five really pretty good corners in this draft. Um, but, yeah, I think those are the guys. I, he would be someone that I would have in that conversation, and uh, I just think the traits are too much to pass up at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, number 26 on my big board, so uh, I don't know. You know, And even like – I feel like a lot of people are saying, like, you know, he is a lot of people's corner one. He is someone who could go, like, I don't know, 15 to the Colts or whatever. Wouldn't hate it. I uh, would not be mad at that. Obviously, I have a couple guys I like more, but would not be against that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I could just I, – I could see him being really good for a long time. And I just think the athletic profile, you know, like you said, you mentioned Pat Sertan, that he fits a lot of those traits of those top-level guys. He, I don't know if he's going to be Sertan, but mm-hmm. uh, I think he could be one of those top-level guys really quick. Yeah, and part of it too is like there are some people, uh, you know, that for me personally, I'm just gonna say I'd be okay with missing on. Like you have to kind of say which prospect would I be okay with missing on. I think Arnold is one of those guys I'd be okay with missing on. Doesn't mean that guys like Arnold aren't gonna come along and hit all the time though. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Well, let's move on. Number three on my big board, someone who do- does have speed. Can't say that, although I have some other issues. Not a lot though. Uh, still is wor- worth the first round pick. Nate Wiggins does make my list, although I still do have him in back half of the first round. The speed is obvious. I mean, uh, four, two, eight 
and you know uh, he'll get beat and he'll be able to come back after getting beat really has that uh you know ability and also sometimes you see these guys that are like they run four two but like you wouldn't know it by watching or like they they, they act like they run four five and like they'll like you know pretend like you know oh i can't get beat deep no he doesn't fear getting beat deep he knows he has speed and that's good he uses it uh, and has good ball skills as well um is physical and i do wonder if he'll get flagged a decent amount at the nfl level uh is also someone who i mean you know he's six to 185 pounds i mean he he can get bullied especially in run game and i am worried like our team's just going to run to his side of the field a lot and essentially take him out of the game, uh, which you do see happen sometimes at these smaller corners, um, you know, uh, can also get beat on, on moves a lot. That's something that can come with age, you know, he is 21 years old, so you can't get better there, but that's my, those are my concerns and why I put him at number three, but again, the upside is still so there. I had him as a top three player on my board or on my, uh, not my big board, obviously, but on my uh, corners list. Yeah, no, I understand that. I do have him later first round too. I do have him number five though, because I do have, uh, like I said, I do have Dejean, um a little bit higher, and then mm-hmm. I have two other guys still. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the speed's awesome. I think some of the things you mentioned about the size, uh, he has the, I'm trying to think of the right player for this. Like that, that it's almost the Napoleon syndrome, right? Like I think he tries to play tough because he isn't the biggest guy. Uh And I think it puts him in a lot of precarious situations, right? Like situations that I don't think he needs to be in, but it seems like that it's kind of the, um, he just tries to, he tries to play a lot tougher than he needs to because he has to show it because he's smaller. And that's kind of just how I feel like when I watch him. And I, I just worry about the flag thing all the time. Uh huh. Yeah, that that's uh, a good take of the Napoleon complex. I don't know which uh what player you would use. Uh, it's the skinny version of that. I don't know. I was what trying to is. think of like Cortland Finnegan, like just like uh-huh. I could see him just starting a bunch of fights because he's trying to show how tough he is. Yeah, just don't but, fight. Like, Andre Finnegan Johnson. wasn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Finnegan wasn't that small. Andre Johnson was just a giant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people look small next to Andre Johnson. <laughs> he one of my favorite players. He was so fun. Yeah, he's the best. He's he's like number one on like that. When you think about that guy, you're like, oh yeah, he was the best. Yeah, the Texans also sucked for so long. Yeah. It's like he was one of those guys you just wanted to see be successful. It's such a uh-huh. shame. It's such a shame. He was like so Calvin Johnson's another play. guy. We're just like, you're yeah. just like, oh, yeah. Like, no one has a bad memory because like it all came with like, oh, Andre Johnson had three touchdowns in a game they still lost. So like, you're, it's still yeah. like, oh, well, he was great, but like, we're still happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. This is moving Nate Wiggins, on. not uh, Andre Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Two corners left on my board. Uh, I teased that I have you know, my hottest take uh, is probably on uh, this, but it's not yet. Quinion Mitchell, number two on my big board, uh, runs a uh, you know four three three, very fast. Uh, you know he's he was Pro Football Focus's highest rated corner in back to back years. Now that doesn't really translate to the next level that much, but still, it's something to throw into pros. Uh, definitely has the speed to come back. Um, he another guy who though he played really off the line. Uh, I saw in Toledo, he's definitely, and I, I think it's a coaching thing, not like that's just what he was doing. But uh, you know, he can get overcommit sometimes, and will kind of get turned around because of it. I also feel like he's a bit of a bit of a project as he can struggle in zone. But again, the physical tools are still so good. Uh, I have him as my corner too. Uh, yeah, he's number one for me, and mm-hmm. I, you know, someone. Uh, Tariq asked, would Christian Gonzalez rank as the number one corner in the class? And I, I said he'd be number two. Um, I, you know, this isn't quite Sauce Gardner for me because Sauce Gardner is probably the most well-rounded corner prospect I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, he, he, he may be tempted for a second there. I think the, the athletic profile here is incredibly impressive. This man covers his ass off. I think he's going to be a number one corner in the NFL sooner than we think. And I got him number one here. I think the speed the coverage ability. I mean, he guys just don't get open. Like they, they don't separate off him. It seems like when he's in his space. So I think it's impossible to get separation on him when he's near you. And I think, I just think he's an incredibly good corner. I think he's fast and he's also good at changing directions when he's fast. And I think it's an incredibly impressive profile. And I think he's going to be a great corner. Wow. Uh, you Kyle, you're raving about him. I mean, listen, I, I like him a lot. I have 14th on my big board. So I'm, I'm with you in the sense of I, I'm very high on him. Um, but I, I just, you know, uh, I, I, I did see some things that need to be cleaned up. And again, I, I think that most guys have things they need to be cleaned up. I just don't know how polished he is. I do probably mm-hmm. agree though. I think he has the highest ceiling out of any corner in this class. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, well, of course you think uh, it's fair. You think it's, he's the yeah. number one corner. 
Yeah, I, I definitely think he has the highest mm-hmm. ceiling. Um, the, I think the thing, like, the thing that separated Sauce for me, especially as far as the, um, like, top level corner, is, like, like, Sauce is one of those guys that even in college it was, like, don't let him catch the ball. And he's, like, okay. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't think Quinion is someone that you're going to basically stick on your number one receiver immediately. But I do think that, like, He's going to have a lot of games where you're looking at stats and it's like, oh, this guy had four catches for 15 yards or something like that, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. or like, I just don't think there's going to be a lot of separation on him, especially down the field. Like this guy down the field is a blanket. And so I just think it's going to be really tough to have a lot of success on this guy. And once he, once he develops that physicality to play on the line of scrimmage, I think he's going to be all pro level. All right. Well, let's talk about, as I mentioned, uh, the, the, you know, the hottest take, uh, and I, which I already meant, I did a mock draft where I mentioned it there as well. So sorry to anyone who has spoiled it ahead of time. But yes, I do have Coley McKinstry makes my number one corner list. And it, to me, it just comes down to I don't need someone who can be, who can do everything. I want someone who is elite at something. And to me, there is no, I, I feel, there are Richard Sherman-esque traits when I watch Kool-Aid McKinstry play. Mm-hmm. I think that he is so – he's the smartest player, maybe the smartest corner I've evaluated. I think he's so good at understanding what the quarterback is doing, understanding the situation. Kyle, there's plays where he's running to the opposite side of the field to get these interceptions or get these pass deflections, or he's just running – when the ball doesn't even go there, but just because like he realizes there needs to be help over there. Like he doesn't, you know, not, there's guys who cover grass. He does not. He does such a good job understanding not just what he needs to do, but what the opposing team is trying to do, uh, like what their concepts are and how to counter those concepts as a corner, which you only see out of the elite guys. Uh, I think his ball skills are fantastic. Uh, I, he's so good at that stuff. Yes, there are you know, he's not the most uh, athletically gifted corner. Uh, I don't think he's mm-hmm. a, a complete mess. You know, he, the 40 time is a bit weird because he only ran out his pro day, which was a 4 4 7, but he also was injured. So, like, I don't know exactly what he would have ran uh, purely. My guess would be high 4 4s. I think it'd be right around there. Uh, it, I do think that he is someone who isn't the fastest, but I just, I, I just see him as such a good zone corner. I think the question is, can he play man? And there will be times where he has to. And like, you know, we saw Richard Sherman get burned against Sammy Watkins in the Super Bowl, right? Like, I think there will be plays like that that happen. But uh, and I think there's also times where he plays a bit too physical, which could result in flags. But uh, as a whole, I, I'm, I just the upside is there with McKinstry. Uh, I think that you get him in the right team, he could be a, an All Pro level player. That's what I saw when I watched this film. Yeah, there there is all pro upside, and I do like him as a top. Uh, you know, I have him fringe top twenty. I have him just below Arnold, and I do think the thing that separates me is I think Arnold, DeGene, and Mitchell have athletic qualities that he doesn't have. But I agree with you; he's probably the smartest corner in this draft, and I think he's just high level at reading the game, understanding the game, and like you said, I mean there are there are Richard Sherman qualities to him. I agree with all of that, um, but yeah, I. I I don't want to. I don't want to knock him too much because I agree with what you, a lot of what you said. But you know, uh, we we I think I do think we did see guys kind of go at him a little bit because athletically he's not the same level. Um, you know, that mm-hmm. Texas game I think was a big thing. But I think he's just so poised. I think he's so composed at that position that like even after the bad games, I still think he's going to bounce back and he could have a multi interception day. Those sort of things. So I do think there are a lot of qualities to really like about him. I just think that there are ways to go at him. Yeah. Uh, Tariq says, Kyle takes our chef's kiss and then says, uh, get this guy off the broadcast referring to me. Tariq, why are you here? Why are you so mad at me? Why are you? Uh, <laughs> w- w- what's going on? I've just given my opinions. You don't have to. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, and I would also say this too. Like, we're seeing less and less teams that are playing cover one man all the time. Like, the the, the, doing the, pay, the Bill Belichick style of defense is kind of getting phased out a little bit, right? We're seeing a lot more these cover two zone and quarters coverage teams. So, like, it's not you know, there's a lot of teams that could use a Kool-Aid McKinstry. So I'm not someone who's, I think I used to be like, Oh, you got to get someone who can play man. That's not really how I, I feel anymore. Again, it does depend on scheme uh, for the, for a specific team. I certainly would recommend someone who isn't McKinstry, but I just, I don't know. Uh, the guy makes plays that I, you rarely see at the NFL level again. Like yeah. when I say smart, I don't just mean like, Oh, he's a pretty, you know, does a pretty good job of staying in position. I mean, like, you know, again, like he's literally reading the offensive play and knowing how to break it up. Like it's it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are like 
if like if San Francisco gets their hands on him, he'd be really good, right? Like, yeah, there there are just teams that I think I would worry about. Like, I also watch like the team I watch primarily. Uh, obviously, I'm a Patriots fan. Like, couldn't draft this guy. Like, mm-hmm. he doesn't fit the right. scheme in my yeah, opinion. I agree. So those are. Those are those are those are some of the issues I have with him. Where I think a guy like Mitchell or DeGene could play in either scheme, right? Like I think he could mm-hmm. play in a San Francisco, and he could play in a New England. So yeah, I mean, I do think this guy could be the best cornerback in the in NFL if he's in the right scheme. Maybe not the best corner, but he could be a very good corner in the NFL in the right scheme. But yeah, I think it's a. Um, I, I do think he is very good at what he does, and I, you know, we we kind of had the same thing with. Um, uh, who was the other guy we're debating this with? Um, I lost my train of thought there, but yeah, uh, Rick Shaw, uh, Rake Shaw. Yeah, Rake Shaw. Thank you, mm-hmm. Rake Shaw. But yeah, I think he has a little more athletic qualities than Rake Shaw, and I think he's better at it too. So I think those are things that go a long way. Yeah, I think he's uh, you know a, a lot smarter as well. With all due respect to Rake Shaw, who I think is also good at that, I think that uh, you know I, again uh, he has traits I haven't seen before, and usually I like to draft those guys, and usually they end up sucking. So sorry uh, for ruining your NFL chance uh, career, Kool Aid McKinstry. I do have him, you know, first round. I do have him top twenty. I have him above Wiggins, but I do have that top five kind of the same uh, outside of uh, DeGene, who I do have up there, and I don't think you did, but it, it is a similar list. Maybe he could go 26 to Tampa Bay. It could happen. It could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Also, we have uh, uh, Tate in the chat. Good point, Jackson, on the in, uh, evolving importance of zone. Hey, uh, I'm getting some compliments now. It's not all Team Kyle in the chat. Uh, broke my streak there a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> hey, uh, I think uh, the final count is 100 compliments to you to one to me. It's all right. We're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I do think he could – I could see all of these guys being Pro Bowl-level guys in the right spot, uh, any yeah. of the top four. Um, Wiggins, I think you need to reach a little bit, but he could be good too. Yeah. Uh, so was there anyone on your list that did not make my list? Uh, two guys. Um, let me go pull up my list again. Um, Kamari Lasseter, mm-hmm. uh, I, I just, he's one of those guys that I, I think is really versatile – um, and I think that goes a long way. He's not the best athlete, so that's a bit of a concern for me. But mm-hmm. I do think he could play a lot of different positions. And uh, my only other safety, I had Lasseter at number eight, sorry. And then my only other safety on the list at number 10 was uh, Jaden Hicks. Um, he's mean. Um, mm-hmm. sure. He hits hard. He hits, mm-hmm. it, hits hard, and uh, I still think there's a place in the NFL for that. Uh, I like I like Jaden Hicks. Sure, I, I get that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for Kamari Lasseter, uh the 40 time, it, it's like, oh, he did that as pro day, and some guy's got a 4 5 1, and some guy's got a 4 6 3. I'm like, well, thanks. Uh, that's not very helpful. Like, what, what do you, why do we still not have someone just video it and then give us, to, like, why, why, why are pro day times still so off that we can't get that down? Because they don't want the information out. <laughs> I guess so. I suppose so. Yeah, that's infuriating. Uh, yeah, I, I believe he actually made my top 50 prospects list. Uh, I just uh, only had, you know, I had 11 defensive backs to do it, to, to make that yeah. list. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see him making, you know, I could see him being kind of a later second round pick. Um, so, but I do like him. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a very, like I said, I think it's a really good de- corner draft. I think there's some really good defensive tackles in this draft. I have questions about edge rusher and linebacker, which is probably why defense isn't talked about as much in this draft, specifically yeah. edge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. And the sexy positions aren't quite, uh, you know, there. So Kyle, let me know can find us on Twitter before we head out. Uh, yeah, make sure to follow us on Twitter. That is at Jackson Kruger. Make sure to follow me at by Kyle Grondon and make sure to follow the account page at on the sideline JK. That is at on the sideline JK. Of course, if you like audio only podcast, anywhere you get your podcast, search on the sideline podcast should be available there. Uh, yeah, Kyle, how do you feel about playing the Toronto Maple Leafs? Great. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Do you, I, I, I was, was wondering, cause like for me playing the Panthers, I'm kind of like, I don't want to lose to the Panthers. We never lost to the Panthers. Is there a bit of a fear yeah. of like, if you like, you know, that's not a team you want to lose to. It would kind of sting to lose a little bit of the, uh, the, the magic of we own the Maple Leafs. And I do, I'm still very concerned about our goal scoring basically throughout the season. Um, mm-hmm. But it is fun to play Toronto. It's fun to play your rivals. I don't care. Like I want to, I'm going to yeah. be pissed if we lose, but it's fun to play your rivals. Why not? Yeah. It's also, if the Leafs win tonight on the last game of the season, uh, them and the Bruins would end up with the same amount of 
actual wins over the course of the season. Just, just the overtime losses. That's kind of, uh, you know, carrying the day for you. We're the overtime merchants, baby. <laughs> I think so. Well, I think the Islanders have to have you covered because they're they're at 38 wins and are still in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. It is bizarre. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, gotta love the NHL. Uh, uh-huh. it's Stanley Cup final playoffs are going to be fun. It's a long, drawn-out process. Um, you know. I, I continue to say on this podcast that I felt like it's the Rangers year and then they won the president's trophy. So I guess it's not their year. Right. Yeah. I, I suppose I, I'm not too optimistic about playing the Panthers. I'm hopeful, but I, you know, I know some lightning fans are like, Oh man, look at our, I, I don't know. I just feel like Kucherov's amazing. Like Vasilevsky hasn't been great for the last couple of years. Like the, uh, I feel like our, our defensive depth is so bad. Our forward depth is so bad. And the Panthers play so physical. There's going to be injuries or an injury or two along the way. So it's like, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm hopeful who knows, but it feels like we need like our stars to carry us, which usually doesn't work in hockey. That defense is nasty for Florida, right? Like mm-hmm. that's just, they're really tough to score on, especially with the, uh, the forwards they have also that can defend. It's a yeah. tough team to play, you know, they weren't even as good last year, and they're still a tough team to play. So, you know, now that they're good. But I could tell you to say, like, hockey can be weird. Like, Vasilevsky is one of those guys that can definitely win a series or two. So um, he's that level of a player. Yeah, and I kind of feel like I need, like, the Panthers take so many penalties. I'm hopeful, like, we are in our power play is so good. That's kind of the one thing we have going for us. Oh, uh, yeah, Bruins, I mean, and the Leafs kind of stink. So I feel like you should feel okay. I'm okay with it. I think we do. Yeah. Can. Uh, I, I think so too. Uh, they, they, the Leafs all of a sudden have a, they still have a goal. They haven't figured out the goalies. I think they're still trying to figure out what lines they're going to play. I don't know what's going on there. They're, the, they're just the biggest losers of the NHL. We we yeah. love to see it. We love to see it. Toronto can't help itself. This team's not you, winning the cup, even if they beat us. Are you hoping for a, a, another game seven? You got it, right? I, I wouldn't mind just um, getting a sweep here, honestly. Would you rather, if you knew you were going to win, would you rather game seven or a sweep? Um, probably game seven, just because if I knew I was going to win, that's more yeah. exciting. But I wouldn't mind a game six in Toronto win, too. Like that, that'd, that'd be good. That, yeah, that would be very good. I, or maybe even like it feels like the Leafs are about to win and then they blow it at the last minute in Toronto. Like, yeah, that, that's what I they want. go up that's three nothing in the first period, then yeah, end up losing four, three. four goals in the final like three minutes of the game. Yeah, that, that's that's the dream. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, it'll be funny. Uh, yeah. No, it should be fun. Uh, the the hockey playoffs and stuff. Uh, you know, and maybe we'll 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 do a recap next week. Uh, a quick recap at the end of the show as well. Kyle, I even watched some NBA last night. Oh yeah, did you watch the in season tournament uh, or play in tournament? No, not the <laughs> yeah. play in tournament. Yeah, they have too many yeah, play in tournament. Yes. Uh, I watched the the end of the Lakers Pelicans game. Uh, and then I looked at the, the Kings kind of seemed like it had it wrapped. Uh, so I didn't watch it. But yeah, uh, I watched it and then Zion got hurt and that was sad. Such a bummer. I yeah, I, I I feel bad for the guy. The, the he just he can't stay on the court. I don't know. Like he's just absolutely dominating this game. They went from a three minute stretch of basically saying that they're gonna make the NBA playoffs in Zion's like here moment. To now, they're probably they could be eliminated tomorrow. Yeah, just that, that's or Friday. That's a, well, whatever. Uh, it's just a bummer. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's our show. Any final thoughts? Uh, no. Let's get out of here. All right. Let's get out of here again. Thanks to everybody uh, for watching or listening. We do appreciate it. Till next time. Have a good one. Peace.